I am in Las Vegas with Lewis Hamilton, a seven-time Formula One world champion. Lewis, it's great to see you. And you. So how excited are you to race on the legendary Las Vegas Strip? It's always been a dream. I was just thinking, driving through the streets here and seeing the, all, all the lights of this, and the casinos and the buildings. Um, and it's been on the plan for a while. We've, we've known for over a year um, and we're finally here. I can't believe it. So I, I can't wait to get on track. Are you nervous about anything on Saturday? I mean, a lot of people are talking about the colder temperatures, right? There's a really late start. It's going to impact everyone's performance. How are you preparing? You know, what's the biggest factor that you're dealing with right now? So this is definitely going to be the coldest race that we've done. I've probably done in Formula One. The cars are designed and built to perform in mostly higher temperature circuits that we go to. And to be able to cover the whole spectrum of a super hot circuit like uh, Malaysia and this temperature, you have to build more types of bodywork to be able to deal with it. The bodywork's going to be more closed than ever on all the cars because they're going to be running to a minimum to keep the heat in. The tires that we have are usually running in hot climates. They're, they're not used to running in these climates. Maybe they'll be fine, but we could see more pit stops than ever. But otherwise, I don't, I don't worry about things like that. You know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I love being here in the States. How personally involved are you with the car? Are you talking to the team every day? When I was younger, that was not necessarily the case, but I'm on a group chat with my engineers. We've been talking every day for the last four days, even over the weekend, about set up for this weekend. Even today, we're talking about the temperatures. We're talking about wing levels and ride heights and setup we'll be having. I have a, a direct connect with the head of aerodynamics and I'm, I'm just checking in with him like every, not every single day because he's working away, but like every week. What have you tried this year? Uh, these are things I've seen on other cars. Have we tried that? So, and then when I go back to the factory every week, I'm having meetings with um, people from different heads of different departments. They spend so much time away from their families and they're so committed. And so that all inspires you. So you've been competing in Formula One since 2007. How have you leveraged that experience on the track? And does more experience equal more wins? Not necessarily. With experience comes, I think, probably also more responsibility. In 2007, I knew how to drive incredibly quick, but I didn't know as much about longevity. I didn't know about health. Uh, I didn't know about being a team player and how to galvanize a group of people. With that experience, I feel like I'm able to be a better team player than ever before, and that leads to championships and wins. It's been very challenging for the team this year and last year. You haven't won a Grand Prix since 2021. How do you stay positive? This last two years has been really a great experience to, to, to really be fighting with the team. We were winning for such a long time, and when you win for so long, complacencies come in, and we all get complacent and take things for granted. And I think this has been a great time for us to really pull back, have our feet on the ground, and start from from start back up and and dig deep. And I think for me, it's just always knowing that we can be better each day. One of the things that really keeps me motivated is that I have Mission 44, which is a non-profit organization I had and I've started. And I, like Austin, I brought 60 young girls to the track and show them, you know, show them the F1 Academy and they got to speak to all the, the, the young female drivers, come and speak to the engineers. I hope that they've left and they're inspired now to be engineers or, you know, just push forwards. Do you think we're ever going to see a female Formula One driver? I personally do think so. Um, I think there's a lot of work that needs to go in the background to con continue to allow access. And I think that's what the F1 Academy is doing. It's showing that there is an opportunity for you to be here. So hopefully there's going to be more young girls that are going to be asking their parents if they can go karting. And, and then there's STEM. There's so many opportunities in the background. There's over 40,000 jobs in our industry as well. When you finally end your illustrious racing career, do you see yourself staying engaged in the sport, maybe as a team principal or owner? I don't think I'd be a team principal. I would love to be a team owner. I do believe in like black equity. I think diverse equity is important. I think it would be hard to come to a Grand Prix and watch someone drive <laughs> knowing that's what I do. So I really have no idea. But with Mission 44, I'll still have to, to really continue to hold conversations, making sure people are still conscious of the fact that we need to be creating better pipelines. And so that's where I think that's what will keep me attached to it.